Howdy out there. I'm in my uh, virtual home studio, which I used to use for doing um, COVID broadcasting for a while with my simulator back there. That's a uh, classic control simulator. And I'm going to later on show you how to fix the lathe side of it. But I made a little uh, logo here called Don't Fear G Code, sort of based on the Don't Fear 5 axis uh, scenario. But I'm going to do this from a teacher point of view to fellow instructors of how I've been teaching uh, CNC programming for a mill. Um, my history, uh, 1984 is when I became a machinist. And around 1985, I was in a job shop and we were hand programming Matsura uh, vertical machining centers. The Matsura 500 was a very popular machine at the time. I used to work for a dealer that sold them. There were Yasnak controls, which are basically a copy of a Fanuc control. And we were hand programming back then. Um, the Matsura 500 was about the size of a uh, BF2, but it didn't have totally enclosed covers on it. But very similar setup, probably the same horsepower as a TM machine, same 6,000 RPM, had a, uh, not a round carousel, but the same kind of tool changing. Um, so we did everything with edge finder setup, touching off the top of the part, and hand code. Later on, I worked at different companies, ran different CAD CAM systems, but depending on the scenario, I would be encounter probing systems, presetting off the machine systems, and hand, and hand setups, and all different scenarios of producing G code either through a CAM system or have the CAM system write most of the code, and we would fill in the blanks. Or if you're on, if you're, I did a lot of setup work where I'd set up with a programming department is sending me programs which I'd have to set up the program and maybe make some edits like feed and speed, tool numbers, uh, jump over clamps, things like that. Okay, so my scenario is when I started in 2012 to teach, I was teaching from that kind of point of view of what I believed they would run into in the field. They might be on probing machines, they may not. They may not be on not on Haas machines or on Finnick driven machines. So. Finuc was same kind of G-code, pretty much. And maybe the, your Mazex, your Akumas, your Fidel's machines like that. Um, from a CAD CAM point of view, the, the most common CAM, CAM was Master CAM. And then later on, uh, some of the others. But as far as which one I would teach at the time was Master CAM. Now Autodesk Fusion 360 is coming extremely popular, and we've switched to that, and I think it's a pretty good system to use. So either one is good, and you're going to be covering most of your bases out there, I think. I've actually been on Practical Machinist Forum, where everybody's got their own opinion on what to use, what to teach, blah, blah, blah. So, But I think, personally, I think today... Fundamentals of Jew code is essential because just to understand how it works. And I think if you make one part on manual G code, you'd have a pretty good uh, idea of how to do it. I'm going to pause for a second. Okay. This is one very good book. I like using the Haas Mill Programming Workbook. I have our print department of school make these up in uh, binders, and everybody gets a book, and we work out of this book. So the exercises in your book, I think this is probably your basic mill workbook, even from a Fanuc point of view. I know the Fanuc education people have their own stuff, but I, I don't think anything beats the pass on the education side. So I would even recommend the Fanuc guys to learn this book as far as learning how to do programming. So if you look in the book, this is a PDF version. And oops, that was downloading going uh, page by page here. And I would use this on the screen to talk about G-code to show the coordinate system, the point of view of the machine operator, absolute incremental programming. And I actually print out this sheet right here, positioning exercise. Everybody 
gets this sheet and they learn how to do G90 and G91 positioning. Then later on, everybody gets a book. And I'll even talk about it, whether they are listening to me or not, like the first few lines of a machine, and I'll show the Mark Terryberry first nine lines of code. And we'll just kind of briefly talk about this stuff. But I think in the end, they need to be able to do something that actually makes something. So in the exercises here, we would have this one called, it was like, I think it's page 41. I almost have these memorized. Interpolation exercise. So I can sit up here talking, whether they're paying attention to me or not, who knows, but uh, I'll have them do this exercise right here. Interpolation exercise. So they're to fill in the blanks. And I think at this point, they really don't have enough. So I made a, a page that actually has some of this stuff a little bit filled in. Let me see if I can find that. Okay, right here I have some things highlighted here, which some of these positions are, and I filled in some of the blanks. I even cross out the I's and J's so they can be real simple about this. So I had them write the program, and I had them put it in one of our simulators, like the one in the back here, because we got like eight of these at school, and run the program. And I thought I'd take it to the next level. I always thought this was a four inch by four inch was a big piece of material. We didn't have any, but when we got involved in project manufacturing, a local company gave us all their uh, big chunks from the end of bars, and we had some big chunks. So we actually put this in a machine, and I could actually do it in edge finding setup or, or how to set up one tool. So we just run this one program just the way it is. And we kind of made one part, and we just keep on putting this part back in, and we actually have them take their program from the simulator, <laughs> bring it over to the real machine, set it up, and run it, and get a visual of how this is supposed to work. I kind of like this scenario of them to see how it works. So, I think having the helper page is good. All right, so back to this. So I just go through all these exercises, and every exercise in here is based on that same part. Uh, we have a, a cut of compensation exercise. And there's, a, there's, a, there's an exercise for that, and we talk about the cut of comp. So it's like, I think sometimes when you're revisiting the same part, they can kind of see the, the differences. We got the one with the G13 exercise that makes circles. It's all on the same part. And we have the peck drilling cycle. So I think as far as just basic basics, if you can get them through this book and making these programs, this is a really good start. So the next thing we do is we do uh, programming exercises that were built into Immerse to learn uh, online system, so I'll show you that one. Now in Immerse to Learn, they gave us these, uh, a blueprint and a fill in the blank sheets. And we had like 20 of these sheets, but I just hand out five. And I actually had to do the helpers also, like we're gonna use the blueprint coordinates, not exactly the center of that C, we're gonna use the corner of the part. So I gave them some helpers. Some of this is filled out in the same scenario. I had them put it in the control. I don't look at this piece of paper. I have them put it in the control. That's how I judge that. And I get them through the first one and I have them do the other five. So each one is, is actually missing more stuff. And at some point they have to really like fill in everything. That's the five, right? There. So that's like step two on the G code path. Step three was this part here, which was like the second part in the Immerse to Learn series. Uh, we we kind of skipped over the first one. It was pretty simple, but we do this one. And we use one inch thick material, a little bit longer than three inch and a little bit wider, it was, and three inch bar stock. So they're gonna program the part and face mill the top, mill the square and the boundaries, do the slot and the three holes. The same thing, same scenario. We're going to give them a partially lit, written program, and they fill out the rest. So we'll even just share a USB and say, "Hey, take this in your computer, or you can put it in your uh, simulator, 
fill out the rest of the program here. Fill out the rest of this program, make sure it's simulated, and then we'll go out to the machine and make that part. So that's my path to G code. Uh, as far as doing that, and I actually teach, like, we, I used to have them run pre-programmed parts in the beginning, and it just it was really about setup and operation and running parts. So I give them parts, and eventually I give some, some G-code parts, and then eventually we would do the NIMS CNC mill operator. That was my path. And we had a couple of seats of Mastercam, and if some of my high flyers would... Uh, be do blow right through them. Then I'll have to do Mastercam, and I had a Mastercam tutorial book, like from Cam Instructor or In House Solutions, and I'd have them go through that and maybe get to that point. So that was we were a one year school, and that's about how far we could get. Later on, I was very curious by the um, the first Titans of CNC, and I was also curious about Fusion 360. So we did. We actually did some parts in, in Mastercam. I programmed them, but they ran the parts. And then uh, later on, we did install Fusion and tested it out and see how that worked. So that was kind of like our path. But we're actually making Titans of CNC parts within three weeks of the beginning of the class. And we're getting through that. And we're trying to learn G-code at the same time through the book and kind of making progress side by side. I'm actually making probably going to have them program a Titan of CNC part manually though. So that would be my, um, how are we going to do it? So I got these here, that, uh, Haas milling workbook. Let's go back to that one. This one here, excellent book for reference. The good, like I put it on my front screen and talk about these and I'll just fill in like Mark Terry Berry videos. Like I like this G98. I made a whole bunch of playlists on here so I could find it easily. And I use this playlist sorter to find them alphabetically because YouTube doesn't keep things in alphabetical order. But I got mill operator, geek group, mill operator, tips of the day, setup, setup, mill setup. And we'll have some G code ones. Where the heck are they here? G code. Right here, I made my own videos using like Mastercam or something to demonstrate what we're talking about on uh, associating D code with toolpath. So I kind of use the simulation of the, the cam to do that. So these are all my, my YouTube channel if you want to use them or not. So here is Haas Tips Mill G code. So I go into here. And I got a list here. What is G code? G one or two, nine lines, how to stop your program. So I'll show these like every other day or something. I like this one, how can cycles work. I think this is an excellent one. Oops, still a little bit too loud. But him breaking the uh, <laughs> drill, I think that gets everybody's attention. Um, as far as, anyway, you know, it's a, it's a good discussion, like kind of pull it up. So I'll have the workbook, I'll have this video plan, and we'll kind of work over the scenario. So I think some basics on that. And I can also pull up scenarios in class like, um, like we have our VF2, which holds 20 tools, and some people are working on one project, and they have like six tools tied up, and somebody else wants to run theirs. And I said, why don't you move your tools to tool 11 through 15, but edit at the machine and use a different work coordinate than he's using, like use G56 or use G154 or something like that. So it's sort of like teaching on the fly. And, uh, but some scenarios like that, I'll show them how to make a soft jar using G13, like a round soft jar. And, uh, that's a pretty easy one to do. So that's kind of my path on, on teaching it. So in here, I still, I have, I have Mastercam <laughs> and I have Fusion here. So I got both. So, um, we're kind of like primarily Fusion here, but now if I, but if I know a kid's running out of stuff to do, or are they going to a master cam shop? We're gonna just switch over. We're gonna do it this way. So it's kind of like our path of how to do that. Okay, that's about all I can tell you on that as far as what I'm teaching and how I'm doing it, okay? And so I'll talk to you all later, bye-bye.